look that old, but maybe I am. This is my favorite part of the program, the Distinguished Alumni. Uh, it's a very difficult award to get, and this year we have a great man, a great poly graduate, 1959, Robert Keene, Jr. Robert was a baseball player and played for the great coach, Bob Lumsden. He was a baseball pitcher, and his record in his senior year was 9-0, and and he led the baseball team to the MSA championship. He also played soccer and was on that championship team. Bob went to Johns Hopkins University, got his bachelor's degree. He went on to get a master's degree from Stevens Institute in New Jersey, and then another master's degree from the University of Michigan. In his long career, Bob Keene became the most respected and recognized naval ship design leader in the world. For 15 years during the U.S. Navy's largest expansion since World War II, he was the Navy's most senior civilian executive responsible for organizing, staffing, funding, and providing technical leadership to a multitude of new product development teams that designed some of the world's most complex systems, naval ships. In his last position at the Naval Sea Systems Command before retiring in 2002, Bob was the Navy's chief naval architect and total ship systems engineer responsible for the design of all Navy surface ships and craft. Bob is taught as an adjunct professor at Virginia Tech and a senior lecturer at the University of Michigan. For his achievements, he's received numerous awards. Bob was born in Baltimore. His father worked on ships for 43 years. He was raised in Parkville, married his high school sweetheart, Judith. They have been married for 50 years and raised three sons, Robert III, David and Michael in Ellicott City. They now live near the Antietam battlefield. Bob has provided community service in the Optimist Club, Boy Scouts of America, and Howard County Youth Program, and continues to be active in his church, teaching Sunday school and Bible studies for over 35 years. He's also a member of the Poly Parrot Club. Please welcome Robert King, Jr. I and friends of Baltimore Poly. I am greatly humbled to receive this tremendous honor. First, uh, I thank you, Michael, for, for that kind introduction. And I also like to uh, thank the BPI Alumni Association, uh, the Awards Committee, and my longtime friend, Bob Robb, uh, a class of uh, 58 at Poly and class of 62 at Johns Hopkins. Bob, he had to leave, you know, unexpectedly. Bob, thank you for your help and the help of the other Poly boys as we grew into young men at Hopkins, and a number of them are here tonight. I also like to thank uh, uh, Miss Williams and Jennifer for for the hospitality uh, this morning. It was a real joy to be there with the students, and Miss Webb, I thank you for uh, you know uh, your inspiring words. My wonderful uh, career voyage and my life in general have been based on the principle of the five F's, uh, prioritized as follows. My faith is my guiding light and my anchor in heavy seas. My family is before, is before all else on earth. My friends who have supported me in good times and not so good times. My focus on fundamentals at work and importantly, Having fun. I have so many people to thank this evening. And most importantly, my wife, Judy, who has devoted her life to our family. My two sons, uh, David and Michael, who are here, who understand that my absence from home on a regular basis was to pursue a, my dream and help provide for a better life. Not just for us, but for the thousands of sailors' families who counted on our Navy ships to be ready to go to sea in harm's way. Of course, I have to tell you about my parents. 
My mother had to quit school in the eighth grade to help her mother run the family grocery store in South Baltimore after her father died. My father was orphaned at the age of six and was raised in the German orphan home uh, in Catonsville. They ensured that I got the best education possible. When I was a young boy, my father would uh, take me to the annual Thanksgiving football game between Polly and City. We always sat on the Polly side and, and rooted for the engineers. I didn't know what the heck an engineer was, but I really liked football. I wanted to go to Polly to become a football star. Well, I didn't become a football star, but I got one heck of an education. My father was also a major influence on me becoming a naval architect. You heard that he worked at the shipyard you know, for 43 years. When I graduated from Hopkins, I wasn't sure what, what engineering career field I wanted to pursue. All of a sudden, magically, I became interested in why ship hulls had different shapes and configurations. My father uh, said, well, that's naval architecture. But to make a long story short, I ended up going to uh, a graduate school at Stevens Institute of Technology and studied ship hydrodynamics, the shape of hulls and, and, and that. But when I finished at Stevens, I thought, I still really don't know how to design a ship. I was then fortunate to go to the University of Michigan and study ship design under a number of world-renowned professors. When I was deciding where to go after graduate school, I again asked my father uh, for advice. And he asked me, what do you want to do? I replied, I want to design ships. He immediately replied, you should go to work for the Bureau of Ships, now the Naval Sea Systems Command, or NAFC. I spent the next 35 years working for the Navy in a number of ship design functions, and I ended up being involved in more than 50 major naval ship designs. It was during the period of the 600 ship buildup under the Reagan administration. It was a God-sent opportunity to be there at NAVC working with so many outstanding military and civilian engineers. I was blessed to work for a supervisor who was my mentor and close friend, Dan Waller. Dan taught me the art of leadership. Well into my 20s, I had a terrible stuttering problem. Dan encouraged me to volunteer to give presentations at professional society meetings and do it over and over again. My weakness became a strength. Subsequently, I was selected to head up the Navy's Hull Form Design and Hydrodynamics Division. One of my colleagues, Dan Goldstein, is, is here tonight. He was Mr. Submarine on Maneuvering and Control. At, at that time, uh, the fleet was, was upset that foreign navies were able to perform missions like helicopter operations in high seas, but U.S. Navy ships could not. This is when I, I first met my good friend and longtime colleague, Ed Comstock. Ed was right out of, of grad school, and I was only a few years you know, ahead of him. Um, and, and, and we teamed up for the first of many projects. We were just starting to learn how to predict a rigid body motions of ships in heavy seas at the interface between the air and the sea uh, using physics-based math models. This required a close a collaboration with academia and the scientists at the Navy's uh, David Taylor Model Basin. As a result, we developed a methodology that has revolutionized the way hull forms are designed, both in the, in, the, in the naval and in the commercial sector. I took this experience of innovation through collaboration to my next assignment as technical director of the Navy Ship Design Group. Ship design is a team sport. I learned how to play team sports under Coach Bob Lumsden, um, where people uh, dynamics is equally important as technical excellence. Too often we don't focus on how central teamwork is to innovation. The ability of systems engineers and technical specialists to work as a team makes them even more creative. Evidence also shows that successful design teams require the right people and the right jobs with the right tools and processes and leaders who have been developed from inside the organization. This requires a leadership culture that is passed on from generation to generation. Pay it forward. Throughout my career, I focused on teaching and coaching fundamentals. 
I'm a strong believer in what some people call servant leadership. You lead by example, you serve the people who work with you. I learned that not only from my father, but also from my four years at Poly, where we were taught uh, to live every day by those six words. We've already heard them a number of times. You know, freedom, responsibility, perseverance, achievement, goodness, and mercy. The two attributes, goodness and mercy, are key to being an effective leader. Uh, what advice uh, would I uh, give young professionals? Find something in life you have a passion for and have, and have fun doing, and you will be good at doing it. Get yourself the best credentialed education uh, possible. Find yourself a mentor, someone who has a sincere interest in your professional success, and find an organization where people work collaboratively as a team. Uh, let me close by saying I have loved my 50-year uh, career in ship design because of what we do, because of the people that I had the honor of working with, and because of the sense of achievement when a new warship was delivered to the fleet. While my portion was only a small piece of the total, I had great pride in realizing, hey, I helped design that ship. And I have one last, last very important you know, a message for you. Go Navy, Pete Army. Thank you and God bless you.